Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Midgard Musings today and watching today's video. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel, as you may or may not already know. If this is your first time, I appreciate your support. For everybody else who's already supported Midgard Musings through your views, comments, likes, and subscriptions, thank you very much. I want to call to attention the fact that I am actively and aggressively seeking 2,000 subscribers by or before January 1st, 2020. All right, that means that we need to get at least three new subscribers every day until then, and your help is greatly appreciated. I couldn't do this, well, I could do this if it wasn't for each and every one of you, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun because I would just be talking to nobody. All right, so everybody's participation and involvement on this channel is greatly appreciated. I invite you to please write down here, see it, right down there, please click that subscribe button you don't want to miss any videos here on this channel be sure to click the bell notifications because then you will get notified every time that I upload new content all right guys I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's support and I look forward to learning new things with each and every one of you about Norse heathenry Germanic paganism all that kind of fun stuff so please become a subscriber today that button is right down here it costs you literally nothing to become a subscriber and then if you want to be notified just click the bell for notifications it's all right if you don't but it is appreciated if you do check the description down below for all the other ways that you can support Midgard Musings through Facebook Patreon Teespring Redbubble uh, anything else that you see down there click on the links follow them see if it's something that fits you I appreciate all your support let's jump in to today's video hail and thank you all <laughs> Hail and welcome to today's episode of Midgard Musings. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate your subscriptions, everybody that's supporting the channel every week with uh, your views, your comments, sharing the videos. It's been great. Hail, thank you very much. Uh, today's subject is uh, going to be one that kind of came about from a discussion that I had on the uh, Midgard Musings Facebook page which if you aren't yet, please head over to Facebook, like the page, follow it. Um, I do stuff on there uh, throughout the week, um, share my rune set wood burning, stuff that I do to help support this channel. Go over there and check all that stuff out. But uh, today's subject of discussion or topic of discussion <clears throat> is going to be one that, like I said, came from a, uh, a thread that I had open there, and it was on the subject of uh, kin, you know, and can one be considered your kin uh, if they don't have blood ties to you? Can people be your kin without having sharing or, or, or having the same DNA as you do? And it opened up a great big discussion about the differences between kin and kith. Okay, so the subject of today's video is on the kin versus kith sort of thing where I see the differences and just familial titles in general. This is kind of, you know, falling off of the, uh, the video that I did. You'll see a, an annotated card up here that I did probably about a year ago, maybe a little bit less, about false kinship. Um, calling people by familial names that you don't share uh, any sort of blood ties to or don't have any familial ties to. Uh, this, like I said, this tends to be something that we see a lot, especially uh, in the newer heathen uh, individuals, people that are just kind of coming into this path. Um, and it also, you know, exists in other fringe groups um, that don't really have anything to do with the roots of heathenry, but that like the, the, the aesthetic of what heathenry kind of envelops, you know, the northern European culture, uh, the traditions. Um, the whole Viking thing. <clears throat> so, before we get started with that, I'm going to go light our incense and our candle. And I do have something that I would like to um, talk about a minute before that, uh, before we get into the subject, okay? Um, this past weekend, actually, today is Sunday, so yesterday, I was uh, actually given the uh, honor and privilege of being invited to a new podcast um, episode. Um, I was interviewed by 
Uh, this new podcast is called Flatline to Beatline. Um, you'll see the name of it appear somewhere here in the bottom of the screen. Um, and then also down in the description, you'll see a link to the podcast um, and how you can follow that if that's your sort of thing. But um, the episode that I talked on yesterday um, is up and you can see that link down in the description. Go ahead and give it a listen. Uh, we covered a lot of different things. We talked about a lot of different stuff. You know, um, the, the start or the launch or where I kind of, why I started Midgard Musings and some other neat questions. So please head down into the description and check out Flatline to Beatline if that is something that you would like. He does a really neat thing with uh, getting exposure to not just heathens uh, from a Norse or Germanic angle, um, but also others, you know, other type of pagany, witchy uh, sort of stuff. So it's really cool. I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Flatline to Beatline, for having me on your show. So everybody, please head down into the description and check all that out. All right. So now that we've got that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, kin and kith, or kin versus kith. <clears throat> now, it should be a, an obvious thing uh, what we're talking about. I think everybody here watching today or listening knows what the title kin means or who your kin are. Um, but for those that may not know, uh, your kin are your blood relatives, the people who you share blood ties to. We're talking about you know your your family members, your parents, your siblings, grandparents, cousins, things like that. People who share blood ties with you. Okay. Now the title of kin uh, isn't really anything that we ourselves can choose to bestow on one another. You're just kind of it's just kind of how it happened. You know, you are born into a family. Your kin are your kin, and. Uh, whatever or however they are that's the way it is and there's nothing that we can do to change that part of things right a person is simply your kin or they're not in in that very literal and basic aspect so with the title of kin um, your family uh, you as a family member you know you all share and we all share uh, with our family a certain level of obligation there's obligations to one another that are attached as we are at uh, you know, kin, kinsman kinswoman kinship that kinship title carries with it and there's an expectation of a certain level at least of, of obligation okay um, family or kin are obligated to one another um, to you know help one another in times of need this this is coming from an angle or from a view of how tightly knit the family unit was in a Norse society. Um, the world was a lot different back then, um, and you were either in the inner yard, you were part of the inner yard, you were part of that inner circle, um, and therefore safe, uh, or you were outside of that inner circle. You were Utengard. We talked. We have talked a bit uh, on this channel about what Utengard and Inengard are, but you're in the inner circle, the inner yard, or in the outer yard, and what is within is safe and what is without is um, basically you know not as safe and as as the inner but not quite as dangerous as the far outstretches of the outer fence the the wild so to speak but you're still not within that you know safety envelope or that safety net of the family unit um, <clears throat> so again the the sense of obligation the the natural order of things the, of the family unit was an important thing um, and now bleeding over and tra you know transferring into modern times, uh, we rebuild that sort of thing through our tribes and our, or our kindreds or whatever you want to call them, whatever your specific model, uh, the, the model of heathenry that you're following. Uh, you have sort of extensions of your immediate family, your your kin. Um, but back then, um, you know, family was obligated to one another, and that obligation had, could be. Um, you know, meant for various things, and, and it was there until or unless uh, something is done or an action is taken or a deed is done that could break the state of uh, the, the, or that frith bond, okay? I think we've talked a lot about frith, or you at least may have heard about frith, uh, me saying frith, bond, grifstead, whatever, um, in various videos on this channel, and for those that don't know frith, um, 
I'm gonna actually link a card up here to a video um, by Eric Shervin over at the Ravens call. He does a really great video on Frith versus Grith um, because we see some examples of, of you know this online Frithstead or you know you, you you're in an internet group or you're in a, a Facebook group and you know the, the admins of the group or whatever they want to call it this is a Frithstead and you can't have Frith online. Uh, there, there, there's no way to really have the, the essence of what Frith is in an online setting because Frith uh, goes beyond just, you know, peace um, or, or anything like that or, or fellowship even. I think a lot of people try to mix up the two terms. They think that Frith is just another term for fellowship and it goes way beyond just that, okay? Frith is uh, a, a trust establishment. There's trust there um, between one or ones, uh, whether it be two people or, or, or a group of people, a collective. Um, and with that trust, there, there is obligations that come, uh, that come with it or that is carried with it. Um, so Frith is, is something that needs to be, or that needs to be worked on to, to establish it. Um, but then there are things that can happen that can break that Frith bond, that can damage that Frith and that can therefore uh, break those those ties Okay, and this can happen amongst kin. Um, we see families that get you know torn apart um, uh, Through nefarious deeds or through other actions that can break that connection That they have the obligation to one another and so therefore if one were to do something so so nefarious or so damaging that it breaks Frith um, the, the obligation is no longer there. You are no longer obligated to that one or ones um, and they are no longer obligated to you um, because of that the breaking of Frith. So <clears throat> blood may have linked you to the, your family um, without any choice or, or action of ourselves or of your own. Obviously you can't decide who you get born uh, to or what family you're born into. Um, but those connections that we have through the blood connection, through our kinship, um, those connections are maintained um, and, and kept or, se or severed and destroyed and damaged uh, by our deeds and by the things that we do. Um, I, saw, I saw comments in the thread of the discussion that I mentioned before from the Facebook page um, and there were people that were saying, you know, I, I, I don't have any, you know, the people who I'm tied to by blood are not my family, they're not my kin because of this thing, that, or the other. You know, somebody did something to me or they, you know, I'm, uh, something was done to, basically they've been disowned, they've been cast out of that family circle, they're no longer a part of it. And regardless of your blood ties to one another, that, that frith was damaged so much now that there's, there's no sense of kin amongst you anymore so you've lost that obligation all right so it can happen it can happen to families it happens unfortunately a lot frith can be repaired um the trust can be reestablished, and those obligations can be re, re you know reintroduced but it's 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 difficult to repair frith depending on the level of severity that somebody did something to to damage it in the first place so we've, we've kind of went into the, the meaning of what kin is and that it is, yes, it is your family and that you really can't change who your family is or are. Um, your blood is your blood, um, but the sense of obligations that you have to them and they to you um, can maybe change or differ depending on what happens throughout life. So now we get into what is uh, called kith, okay? Uh, and kith is a word that basically refers to those who are um, connected to you now outside of what blood would, uh, would, would provide. They are not your blood family, um, but they hold a title of family to you and you to them, um, usually through oaths, okay? Um, we can also see that there may be family or kith uh, established through, you know, marriage. You know, uh, you're marrying into a family and now this family is, is your family because of that. Um, and you are part of their inner circle now, and you are kith, and they are kith. You are kith to them, and they are kith to you. So, um, you know, 
there's that, um, and then there's the other part, like I mentioned before, uh, the oath process, the, the process of worthing yourself and oathing uh, yourself to a, to a tribe or to a kindred or to a family um, that does not include your blood connection. So those who are kith to us, um, or the way I see it, are those who have worth their way, like I said, um, into the inner yard, into the inner guard. All right, they weren't born into it, um, but they now have the safety and protection of your inner circle um, through things that they've done or um, worth themselves into it. It goes beyond just saying, I promise to be this, I promise to do that, whatever. No, they have to show their worth. They have to prove themselves uh, through their deeds to be become a part of that familial construct that exists within the inn guard. You know, so there's no sharing of blood <clears throat> to connect us as kith to one another. Um, and yet, the title of kith can often carry more weight, I feel, um, and mean more than the term kin uh, because of blood ties. We can have more stronger connections to one who is kith uh, over one who is kin. Um, I personally have, you know, those who are kith to me who I've bestowed familial title to and who have in, in, in exchange bestowed familial title to me. Um, and we have a very strong connection to one another, but we're not related. And I have less connection to those who I am related to, some of, the, some of my actual kin. Um, I am closer to these people who are not kin to me through blood, but that are nonetheless uh, have, care, have, have earned a title of family to me through what they've done and through what I've done for them and with them. Um, so you can theoretically be closer to your kith than you are to your kin based on your and their you know involvement with each other. Um, it reminds me of a phrase that we will see often spoken but not in its entirety. Um, the, the phrase is that you know blood is thicker than water but the entirety of the phrase is that the blood of the coven is thicker than the water of the womb. And, it, and, it, and it, that goes into what it really truly means that um, <clears throat> the blood of the coven is thicker than the water of the womb. So you can have connection to your collective of people, your group, your, your tribe, your kindred, whatever you call it, um, that, that is stronger and thicker than your connection to where you physically came from, your, where your DNA is So tied. this is where we get into, I feel, where kith and kin and, and familial titles from a heathen context uh, comes into, right? Members of our tribes, our close friends, um, they can become as important, if not more so important, than those who share blood with us, right? Because these people who have worked their way um, into our lives as, as, and, and, share, and, and now have a familial title bestowed on them, they share a common interest, they share a common goal, and they will work to accomplish said goals with you um, and they, so therefore they, they understand what obligations they have to you and you understand the obligation now that you have to them and so it becomes a very, it's a symbiotic relationship. There's, there's nothing that is all give, no take, all take, no give. The gifting cycle, the, the reciprocation of things uh, once it starts must continue in order to maintain that healthy level um, of frith and that obligation to one another has a healthy uh, existence, right? <clears throat> so through our oaths, well, like I mentioned earlier, how um, we can oath ourselves uh, to one another, the oath, we, we did a video uh, a couple weeks ago about the power of the oath and what the power is, what, what power there is in an oath and what it means to actually oath. It's not just simply a promise um, or a pledge. Um, there is there is active weird being exchanged and there's things that are being done uh, in the metaphysical uh, aspects of things that tie one another to each other right that tie you to each other so through those oaths and, and displays of loyalty bonds are created that are stronger than the blood ties all right so in our tribes our kindreds those members 
uh, who come in and become our kith are now engaging in that gifting cycle uh, to maintain and build frith. Um, so just like in the case of kin, uh, where to are the family, the, the blood family, you know those that are and, and who are kith, um, they can also lose their status, their familial title, uh, by breaking frith and thereby no longer being a part of our inner yards. It's the same way as, as what a family member could do. Anybody, you know, um, that you become close to um, can betray your trust um, and and therefore have damaged frith to the point where they could be cast out, they could be removed from the tribe, removed from your inner yard, cast out and without, and they are therefore no longer, um, you're no longer obligated to them. It's the same thing. It's, it, it, you know, whether it's your blood family or whether it's your oath family um, or your tribal family, uh, it all goes back to the, 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 the frith that is built and maintained uh, and if it's damaged, there's repair work that needs to take place and things have to be fixed uh, before or if that title can be brought back onto that person or they, whether they can become now uh, within the, the good standing uh, of the tribe and have the protection uh, of the tribal members and, and, and have that sort of connection, right? So again, going back to, like I said in the beginning of the video where I talked a long time ago about the sense of false kinship um, and that you know we are not family family. We are not brothers and sisters of heathenry. There's, no, there's nothing that we can accurately say that our, first of all, our ancestors ever felt this sense of, you know, if you're not my literal blood brother, then you are my brother just because we share a same interest in, you know, venerating the gods and, you know, having bloat together and whatnot, you know, we can share those interests and share those similarities and not have any sort of kinship titles bestowed on us. Um, and that's kind of where I sit on it. Um, the title of, a, of a familial titles, um, that is reserved and, and held for only those who have worthed their way, that aren't my literal blood family, that have worthed their way into my life through their deeds. Um, and who have actually been able to spend time with uh, personally and have had to work weird uh, with them. Um, and it takes more than just a chance, occasional, you know, hanging out type of thing. Like there, there is literal, you know, lengths of time that need to be spent. It's not a very, it's not a casual thing to me. Um, but it, it, it's definitely something that I hold, I, I, I have a, a pretty serious stance on it. Um, I don't try to come across as, as you know, if somebody wants to call me brother and I don't really know them or anything like that, I'll, I'll kind of, I just, I let it go usually. It, it's, it's not so big a deal for me that I have to be like, ah, oh, there you go again, and I, and I get this like cringe look on my face. Um, I may deep down inside kind of cringe a little bit, like, eh. but it's not a big deal enough for me to want to, you know, stop what I'm doing and go out of my way and tell this person, oh yeah, by the way, don't ever do that to me again, don't ever call me that again, because you're not my brother, nothing like, you know, I don't get into it to that level, but the title of, of brother or sister, or any other sort of familial title, um, there's weight that goes into those names and those titles, and the weight comes from uh, the obligation that we have to one another, and those obligations come through thrift, through frith, um, so whether we're family or not, um, the, the stronger our ties become uh, are due to the frith that we have set and established between one another. So anyways, everybody, I hope that this video has been in, an interesting one for you, that the subject of uh, familial titles from the heathen context, at least from one heathen's uh, approach uh, or view, um, I am by no means sitting here and telling you that now this is the way everybody should think. Obviously, it's not. Um, if it work, Whatever works for you, by all means, continue working it. Um, if it works for you and your collective, that's great, that's fine. Not my haul, not my call. Going back to Eric's famous uh, hashtag that he has over on his channel. So, not my haul, not my call. Everybody, if it works for you and you wanna make it, you know, don't let me or anybody else sway you from, from thinking otherwise. But it is some stuff to think about, and I hope that it's kind of sparked some other people's minds 
uh, mind fires to uh, consider at least what I'm saying and see if it applies. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, head down into the comments section and let me know and let everybody else who's watching know, you know, where you sit um, on the whole debate of uh, Kith and Ken and it, are they one and the same? Is there definite differences between it? Kind of the way I uh, presented it to everybody here today, the way I see it. So I'm looking forward to hearing and reading everybody's comments. Please be sure to go down into the description, click the link below on how you can support Midgard Musings through uh, PayPal donations, buying merchandise through Teespring, Redbubble Store, uh, buy me a coffee, become a Patreon, um, buy my rune set.